Short form contact is evolving fast and high energy engaging videos are almost everywhere. In this video, we'll take a plain podcast recording and transform it into a dynamic attention grabbing video with using After Effects. But first, let's check out the final result. Building a personal brand or having your company on the internet is phenomenal. Let's say you have a regular business. You should have a social presence. If you have a business, you have a website, but you have no SEO, why don't you? People are going to look for answers on the internet. You have to be the first one to show up. And that's why I think building any sort of awareness on the internet is a zero-sum game where you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. So, first of all, we're going to open a new composition. Then I'm importing the podcast video. I will drop the link down below so you can also use it. So let's create a new solid and add a gradient from perfect, then change the second color to blue. Next, I'm going to use the rectangle tool and mask the entire solid. That's going to be our first animation background. So I'm just going to mask it the entire solid layer at the keyframe at the start and slide it to right. We select our first image and import to the timeline. Then, I'm gonna add position and skill keyframes around here. After that, I will go back to the first frame and place it down here. And finally, select Easy Ease and make it smoother on Graph Editor. Then, I added the skill keyframe and set it to a date. Now, the next thing, we need to create a text style and add a glow effect for the entire scene. Let's just go to the effect panels and add a deep glow effect and set the radius around 40 and exposure 0.2. Then we're gonna add a lumetri color and set the highlight minus 150 and contrast is around 130. And finally, I am adding hue saturation effect and set the matter lightness around 32. So it's now time to add our text and I'm gonna create a new text layer and write the main title. I will use Morgnite Extra Bolt, which you can also find below. After resizing and changing the color, let's place it behind the man. Then I added a position keyframe and place it up here and select both keyframe and make it easiest. So, let's go back to effect panels and add the deep glow effect. Set the radius to 120 and exposure 0.1. Now I'm gonna create a new text layer, type the word and change the font as Fox 101. Then change the color to black, center the anchor point and place it around here. As for the background, I went over the rectangle shape layer and changed the color as dark blue. Then I create a simple rectangle and placed behind the text. I finished off with nice deep glow with an exposure 0.1. Great, we're gonna pre the text and background layer so we can make the mask opening. Then go to the frame where we wanna start and select the rectangle mask. And we'll mask the entire pre and make sure our mask corner is same position with the background mask. While your pre is selected, press M and add the keyframe. Then go to one frame back and change the mask position. Then press F and set the feather around 50. We're gonna create a new adjustment layer and add a deep glow effect with a radius 430 and exposure 0.1. Then add the lumetri color effect and set the media to minus 1. Lastly, add the noise effect and set it to 16. With this being done, we just finished our first scene, now we can move on to the next one. First, I'm gonna select the ellipse tool and create a white shape layer. Then move it outside the scene and set the anchor point to the top right corner. Then I'm gonna go to the end of the first scene and set the scale from 57 to around 350. Select the keyframes, right click and choose Easy Ease. Then I'm gonna go to the graph editor and adjust the keyframe speed. Next, I'm gonna add the gradient number effect and I'm gonna change the first color to white and second color to gray. Then add the keyframe to blend with original and set it to 100. Then go to the end of the transition and set it to zero. These changes will make the white solid look more like a gradient. Now we can add the text, right click and create a new text layer and change the font to Europa Nova regular. Then let's change the color to something like dark blue. Don't forget to align it to center of the scene. Then duplicate the first line and write the second text, which is on the internet. After rearranging the both layers, let's duplicate one more time and write our third line. Then change the font to Europa Nova Extra Bold and make the color black. And finally, change the font size to 95. Now select the all layers and remove unnecessary parts. Now starting with the first line, we'll mask each word using the rectangle tool. Then, we'll sync each word with the voiceover, so that when the voiceover says the relevant word, it will appear at the same time. For the scale it up all the text layers, I'm gonna create a new null object and connect all text layers to it. And add a scale keyframe when the first letter appears, then change the scale to 108 by the end of the scene. And we're almost done with this section, we're just gonna add a one final moment. Let's go back when the third line appears and select the pen tool. Then I'm gonna close the fill and open the stroke and set it to 8. Next, I will zoom in and draw a simple line, but with a slight curve. And I'm gonna add rough and edge effect and change the edge type to rusty and set the border settings to 1. 
then we'll open the shape layer settings, go to content, shape one and stroke one. And open that and select trim pad. And I'm gonna add a 1k frame to end, then at the start of the third line, set it to zero. That completes our surgery. Let's add an adjustment layer, at the posters the time and set it to 12. Select the background shape layer, add a position keyframe and move the shape layer to up. And swivel dot in the graph editor, this will give a natural transition effect. So, it's now time to get into our third animation. Before we start, I would like to thank these two channels for the inspiration. Check out their videos, they are the best. Now, let's dive in. Let's open a new solid, which is gonna be our background and another gradient round effect. Change the first color to blue and second one is black. Then set the ramp shape to radial ramp and move the blue color to center. Now we're gonna create a new shape layer, activate the 3D on layer and then set the camera settings to advanced 3D because we're gonna use geometric shapes. Then open two view and select the top view. Great, so I will rotate 90 degree and change the extrusion depth to 100. Then I change the color to blue and duplicate it, decrease its size and replace it on one of the edges. Then I increase the extrusion depth and make it taller and I duplicate it two more times and place it to other edges. Next step, we will add these 3D objects so we'll go to sketch web and download the objects. Since we have activated the advanced 3D option, we can now directly import these 3D objects and place them on all the circles. And then I duplicated these small cylinders and raised their position so we can fill the empty space above. Then I selected all the assets and connect them to our brick main circle with parent link so we can rotate them. Then I keyframe the rotation, start from the handshake to Google logo, then I smoothed out all the keyframes using graph editor. Then I added my camera and set the first look from the camera position. I also repositioned circles and the 3D objects so it can look way better. So everything is set up, now we can rotate the 3D objects. I'm gonna start with the handshake and giving rotation from the orientation so the object will follow the camera movement. And then, I'm gonna apply the same settings from the other objects, they will also always turn to the camera. And after making final touches on graph editor, that's our final result. Additionally, I'm gonna add text for each circle, this will make the scenes seem richer and more understandable, so the audience will connect with the conversation they are listening to. And of course, all the text layers are gonna face the camera so we can read them. For the transition, I'm gonna zoom in extremely close to the Google icon with the camera so we can go inside the letter O and start our next scene. And I create the adjustment layer and added my vignette, noise and fisheye warp effect. And this is what we end up with scene 3, now we can move on our next animation. Now let's create a circle shape layer first, no fill effect, only stroke and I will choose blue as the color. Next, I'm gonna import my PNG character and duplicate 6 times and arrange them all to fit inside the circle. And add a pop-up transition to all characters and open it frame by frame. Next, I open a new 3D camera to give depth of field effect to the characters. I'm also opening the second view to better adjust the space in between them. And now I can set the distance between the characters. We don't need to set all the characters, just separate them line by line. Then I duplicate one of the characters, change the color to dark blue and move it to back and enlarge it. And next, let's add drop shadow and deep blue effect to our main character. I will also add drop shadow effect to all the other characters. And for the zoom in effect, I created a new camera and I had a position keyframe to make it move slowly from the beginning to the end of the scene. That's a lot of animating, but we're not done. So I'm gonna add a position keyframe to our main blue character so that it appears gradually. But we can make it even better, first at the first keyframe we'll add a mask and invert it, then once the character fully appears we'll open the mask. And that's it, job done. And I create an adjustment layer and add a fisheye warp effect, then I add a warp keyframe at the start of the scene and set it to minus 40. Next I add two more keyframes right before and after the main keyframe and set them to zero. Transition nicely done. Then I added a deep cloth adjustment layer, made the exposure 0.1 and I also added the matte color and set the vignette minus 1 and finally I added a noise effect and made the amount 16. So before moving on the next scene, let's create a null object and connect all the characters to it. Then I'm gonna add a position keyframe to null object and move it down and open the graph editor and make it smaller. 
And this is what we end up with this scene. It's now time to get into our next and final animation. First off, I'm gonna add a new rectangle, enable the fill, set the color to black, and disable the stroke. Let's duplicate our rectangle, disable the fill, and enable the stroke, set it to 5. That way, our graph background is ready. Now, I'm gonna grab a pen tool and draw a white graph line. Then I'm gonna go to the shape layer settings, navigate to stroke, and click the plus button next to dash. After that, I set the value to 25. So, our graph is almost done, now it's time to add the text. I'm gonna create a new text layer, and write rate, then duplicate layer, and change it to time. I also duplicate one more time and change it as an awareness rate, that's gonna be our title. Next step, let's create three small circle shape layer and place them on our graph. Then, we're gonna add text for each layer and place them right above the circles and change it as 1k, 5k, and finally 10k. Alright, there we go. Now this part is crucial, so please watch carefully. I'm gonna pre-compose the first shape layer and cut it where we wanna start the shader effect. Next, I'm gonna add the shader effects and change the view to render it. And then go to the shape, choose glass, and set the repetitions to 200. Then, I'm gonna create a new white solid and hide the layer. Now, let's zoom in into the scene, grab the pen tool and mask the solid on the shape layer. Then go back to shader settings and set the shader threshold to 1%. Also, select the white solid as gradient layer and change the source to effect and mask. Then let's go to the force 2 settings and place the point around here. For force 1, let's place point a little above. Finally, grab the origin point and place it middle of the shape layer. Now I'm gonna extend the pre-compose layer and move it all the way to the right, so it's at the beginning. Then I'm gonna set the depth, radius, strength and gravity settings. You can pause the video here and apply these changes too. Once we apply the settings, add a gradient ramp, change the first color to blue and the second color to gray. Then place the white color point around here and blue color point is here. Now let's add a keyframe for the blue color at the start of the pre-composed layer, then around 10 frames later change it to white. And then move these frames, add one more keyframe and change the color to white again. Now as you can see, when the crash starts, it's gonna look more realistic. Now with this done, I'm gonna duplicate two more times and change the render settings of the first layer to pieces and for the other two, set them as layer. And I'm gonna carefully mask each layer so we can add position and rotation to make it look more realistic. Now we have three separate parts and before adding the keyframes, I'm gonna replace the anchor points to the center of the layers. With this being done, select both layers except the priest layer, add the position and rotation keyframe to start, and around 1 second later, change the position and rotation for both, and around 1 second later, change the position and rotation for both the top half and bottom half. That's it. Now all you have to do is repeat that on the other circles, so you can watch this part again and apply the effects for the other ones. Alright, so now we are done with our circles, now we'll make our curve line. First off, I'm gonna grab a pen tool and enable the stroke and make it blue. Now, let's draw a curve line but make sure that when it hits the ball, the impact starts from the point where the cracks actually appears, so it feels natural. Then, let's add a trim pad into our shape layer and set the first keyframe to 0. And at the end of the scene, set it back to 100. This part is very crucial because we're gonna use the timer mapping, that means we'll adjust the speed of the line's movement so that, just before the shape layer's crack, the line is in the right position. After that, we're gonna pre-compose the shape layer and add deep globe effect and set the exposure settings to 0 0.23. With this being done, I'm gonna create a new object and connect all the layers to it. Then set the scale around here 115, then right before the scene ends, set it to 100. Now, I'm adding position and scale keyframes so we can quickly zoom into our line and follow it throughout the scene. We're almost done, but we can make it even better. First off, I'm creating an adjustment layer and adding wiggle position effect. And just before the crack, I'm adding keyframes and setting both to zero. Then one frame later, I set the wiggle speed to 37, and about 10 frames later, I set it back to zero again. And I'm gonna repeat the same process for the other two layers. Then we'll add a blur to the edges. To do this, I'm gonna create an adjustment layer and apply the fast box blur effect. And set the blur radius to 15, then grab the rounded rectangle tool, mask the layer slightly smaller than our scene. Don't forget to enable the inverted mask and finally set the feather around 360. That's the end of this tutorial guys. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. 
I will also share the project file so you can also check it out and God bless all of you guys.